kurja Hape mitte leelist tõug on kohalik popvare kõrvadega peenis Sõnad on kurja, tead, mida teen Keel on meela, veela, proovi veele veel Fakti sai muuda siin ja vaimine aju Hey hey everybody, Donald here So today I am proud to bring you what I think is or should be one of the very first video reviews of ASUS's ROG Strix Scar 18, their brand spanking new 2023 uh, model of their beloved Scar series. So how good is this thing? Should you buy one? That's what we're uh, gonna try and figure out in today's video. So if you have around $4,000 uh, to spend on a laptop, then this should be pretty interesting. So grab yourself something to eat and drink because this is gonna be a little bit long one here, uh, but I'm gonna try and go uh, over and cover pretty much everything there is. So should be pretty interesting. First off, like always, uh, the specifications or well, we are coming back to the price. It's about 4,000 US dollars or euros in the EU. Uh, that's pretty freaking expensive, but a single desktop uh, 4090 is about $2,000, so actually a pretty good deal, perhaps? Well, there are actually two SCAR 18 models to choose from. The one that you see here has the Intel Core i9-13980HX. 2.2 GHz that boosts up to 5.6 while gaming and has 24 cores, 8 performance and 16 efficient cores. And yeah, this thing comes with a NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 graphics card with full support of ray tracing and DLSS, which have been updated to third generation, where DLSS can increase your frame rate by double in most scenarios and ray tracing, uh, which, well, you know, it adds some very nice reflections into games like um, Cyberpunk 2077 that um, supports this. And uh, as I mentioned a bit earlier, the two SCAR 18 model uh, main differences are the graphics cards. So one comes with a 4090 and the other one with a 4080. So there is a, uh, th th there's a cheaper, th there's a cheaper option out there. If, uh, if we can actually say cheap in this review. Uh, now, moving on to some other interesting stuff. Uh, what I did was open the SCAR up to see what the internals looked like. The cooling solution, the speakers, the RAM, SSD, and uh, well, I found that this thing has 32 gigabytes of DDDR5, uh, 4800 megahertz memory in here, uh, then two 2 terabyte PCI Express 4.0 M.2 SSD drives running in RAID 0. Although my version seems to be uh, two one terabyte uh, uh, M.2 drives in RAID 0. Now coming to the screen, right, uh, this thing here is an 18 incher, which is actually pretty large uh, considering it is a laptop, right? It is using ASUS's Nebula display, which um, should give you the best bang for buck for a display. It should have everything. If ASUS states it's a nebula display, you know you're getting your money's worth. The only thing I don't like about this display is the 16 by 10 uh, aspect ratio. Because, uh, yeah, while playing games, you have a bit larger image space, right? Uh, but uh, at the downside of most videos that you watch on YouTube or, you know, download, are, you know, going to have black bars because most uh, video content out there is made for 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Which, if I'm honest, I, I don't actually love that much because all the videos on YouTube and basically 90% of the content out there that I'm watching is made for 16 by 9 ratio. So yeah, we do get a bit more space in games, um, but at the downside of, you know, having black bars in most of the video content that we consume. But the resolution is still spot on for this laptop, coming in at 2560 by 1600. Uh, you don't want 4K on a laptop because there is not a lot of visual difference on a small screen when you compare 1080p to 4K. Uh, 1440p up to 1600p is perfect for 14 to 18 inches. Still super crispy, clear image and great performance in games. 
uh, some other things to note is the 100% TCI-IP3 color space and IPS colors that have been calibrated to the Pantone color palette, uh, making this screen absolutely pop out. Uh, the colors are absolutely fantastic. Uh, uh, great to work on this thing, uh, but it doesn't stop there. It also has G-Sync for those who want an extra competitive edge while gaming and 240 hertz at 3 millisecond response time. This laptop has been made for gaming. And with a small extra, ASUS is supporting Dolby Vision HDR streaming at 500 nits. I mean, overall, the hardware inside this thing is absolutely unbelievable. Uh, amazing power uh, from Team ASUS. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave ASUS's uh, website link down below in the description as well, so you can, you know, check out all the exact specifications if you wish, right? Uh, but Let's come to the benchmarks, right? That's why most people are here, right? How good did it uh, perform in all sorts of different games in uh, something like Cinebench or Crystal Disk Mark, right? We're gonna check everything out, uh, also the thermals, how good was the battery, how good is the web camera? Because this this SCAR model finally has a web camera. The previous models did not have a webcam. So this is a pretty neat uh, feature, hopefully, because I've seen Asus put really, really bad webcams into really, really expensive laptops, which I do not understand. So we're gonna check that out, uh, how good is the video quality and audio quality as well. But as always, I'll add full specifications of this laptop uh, to the corner of the screen so you can keep track of it uh, when watching the results. All these tests uh, were run on Windows 11 and were running at the most maximum detail possible, ideally without any anti-aliasing. Uh, you can see the exact uh, settings that I used at the beginning of each uh, and every test as I go over the graphical settings menu uh, and I'm going to be using the Durbo operating mode from the ROG Armory Grade software which um, you should always use uh, when playing games as it gives you the most maximum performance possible and even overclocks the video card slightly. So first off for Cinebench R23. I ran through both single and multi-core tests and the results are on the screen. 28,976 points for multi-core and 2,105 points for single-core. That is some serious firepower here, even compared to some decent desktop counterparts. The Intel Core i9-13980HX is an absolutely fantastic CPU for any task that you throw at it. Next up was Crystal Disk Mark, and again, um, do note that this car 18 has two PCI Express 4.0 M.2 SSDs running in RAID 0. That's double the speed versus a single SSD. And uh, yeah, holy Moses, 11,489 megabytes of reads and 8,519 megabytes of writes. That's pretty darn nice if you wanna be moving some larger files, uh, but I do feel that anything over 300 to 500 megabytes uh, of reads and writes uh, is more than enough on SSDs and pretty much identical at opening uh, or closing games. So I mean, it's neat, but it's not a game changer. Moving on, I checked how does this car 18 fare in 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme and Port Royale. So in Time Spy Extreme, it got a score of 10,178 points, and in Port Royale, 13,447 points. Now, I was kind of hoping a bit better result here, because uh, my desktop uh, 13900K with my RTX 4080 gets around 18,000 points in Port Royale. But I guess it's fine because it is still a laptop. But, all right, let's kick things off with some proper gaming benchmarks. First up is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Again, do note that all the gaming benchmarks are run at 2560 by 1600, so everything turned to the most maximum detail possible with anti-aliasing at low setting, cause for whatever reason, you just cannot turn it off in this game. 
and it received 140 frames per second as average. That's pretty freaking nutty. I guess you can try to tweak some stuff here and there and maybe you can get close to 240 FPS uh, to fully utilize the 240 Hz. But alright, uh, how about uh, Far Cry 6? Again, all of the graphical settings cranked to the max and it got 133 frames per second as average. Pretty good. Uh, the gaming experience in Far Cry 6 is absolutely amazing on this thing. But that's not all. Far Cry 6 also allows you to use Nvidia's ray tracing technology. So I left the graphical settings um, the same, but this time I also enabled ray tracing and 107 frames per second as average. Actually, not that much lower than without ray racing, so I guess this kind of shows how good the new third gen ray racing cores are working. Uh, but yeah, playing Far Cry 6 on this thing was an absolute blast. So moving on to Grand Theft Auto 5. All the graphical settings to the max and the aliasing turned off and advanced graphics also to the max. The result of the fourth and the longest pass was 132.5 frames per second as average. Absolutely amazing job once again and as GTA 5 is a CPU hungry game, the Intel Core i9-13980HX is doing a very nice job here. Alright, how about Call of Duty Warzone 2.0? So again, graphics to the max, no ray racing, no DLSS, and it got an average frame rate of about 120 frames per second uh, on my benchmarking section where I test my uh, different laptops or different cards, right? Uh, feel free to adjust the settings here, enable DLSS or something, and you might get close to 240 frames per second. Uh, enable G-Sync as well, and my god, this thing will be a perfect laptop for Warzone 2.0. So another game I benched um, just for fun pretty much uh, was Counter-Strike Global Offensive just to see if something like this could actually hit over 240 frames per second at maximum detail and uh, it did. Almost 400 frames per second in the dust too. Again, I feel this laptop is just an amazing gaming laptop in 2023 to have the absolute best competitive edge with the power, the G-Sync, the high 240Hz refresh rate, 3 millisecond response time and still displaying proper IPS Pantone colors. I mean, this thing has pretty much blown me away so far. But there's one more game and that is Cyberpunk 2077 with its very exciting expansion Phantom Liberty on the horizon it needs to be known how well laptops with an RTX 4090 and a Core i9-13980HX um, can handle games like this, right? At maximum detail with ray tracing uh, and the LSS. So firstly, I ran the benchmark through without TLSS and without ray tracing support. 2560 by 1600 and it got 56 frames per second as average, which is actually pretty comparable with a desktop RTX 4090 and an i9-13900K. Uh, oh wait, 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 wait a second, that score was at 4K resolution. Okay, scratch that. Uh, but still, it, it's a pretty decent result, uh, right, for, for today's crisis benchmark. So next up I enabled ray racing on psycho settings and uh, then got an average FPS of 36.8, which is still playable, right, uh, but not really enjoyable. Uh, so let's see how DLSS can brighten up our day. I enabled DLSS 2.0 at the most aggressive mode of ultra performance and uh, voila, 93.5 frames per second as average. Absolutely amazing to play like this, uh, doesn't feel that the resolution has taken a hit that bad, uh, but some textures do look a bit blurred out. Still, I wanted more, more frames per second, give me more. 
Well, okay, so you see, this is the 4000 series of NVIDIA's GeForce cards. And as I mentioned a bit earlier, this means it does come with DLSS 3.0 support. So why am I testing it at DLSS 2.0? Well, most games do not offer DLSS 3.0 support, or in other words, uh, frame generation. They just don't offer it yet, right? But Cyberpunk 2077 just recently added this support. So how did it perform with frame generation on as well? So, ray tracing on Psycho settings, DLSS at ultra performance, and frame generation turned on. And BOOM! 179.6 frames per second as average. That's freaking insane! And the picture quality still felt totally fine. Absolutely insane technology, especially for small screens uh, where you don't notice weird anomalies that much, right? But, Tunnel, this is a 240Hz laptop. Could we reach that if we, let's say, you know, disable ray tracing but leave DLSS 3.0 on at maximum settings still? <laughs> Ray tracing disabled, DLSS on ultra performance, and frame generation turned on. Max settings 2560 times 1600, and boom! 241.3 frames per second as average. Absolutely freaking nutty. Though, if you do ask me, I I'd leave ray tracing enabled and maybe use a bit less uh, aggressive DLSS mode to have an absolutely amazing experience in Crisis 2077. Uh, wait, wait, wait a second. I mean Cyberpunk 2077 on the SCAR 18. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. The video is getting pretty, pretty darn long. But let's make it even longer and have some real fun by setting everything to the lowest detail and leave DLSS on ultra performance with frame generation turned on and giga boom, giga boom. Okay, well, not that much, but 269.6 frames per second. Nice. So that kind of concludes the gaming benchmarks, right? But there's still a little bit more to talk about here. Like uh, the temperatures, right? How high did the temperatures go? What were the temperatures while, you know, just browsing the web, right? So let me talk a little bit about operating modes here. Because ASUS's ROG department has added an extra button on the hotbar here, which you can uh, also, you know, uh, configure in the Armory Grade software. So whoever still doesn't know about this, uh, it is a pretty amazing extra little feature with ROG laptops. And uh, yeah, with this SCAR18, this is an extra fun feature because you can actually go into the Armory Grade software and manually tweak the fan and speed levels and even overclock your laptop. Uh, though by default you get silent, performance and turbo operating modes. And what these do is either make the laptop quieter by reducing the overall power output, which enables it to reduce the fan speeds uh, or doing the opposite. So the silent operating mode will enable Nvidia's Whisper Mode 2.0, uh, which pretty much just limits the FPS to 60, although you can disable this limit in the GeForce Experience software, but will make the laptop hotter and noisier. The performance operating mode is there to challenge the Durbo operating mode. So in short, uh, it is a bit slower than the Durbo mode, uh, but a lot quieter. And uh, yeah, the last mode is the turbo mode, which cranks everything to the max with even a small 50 MHz overclock on the RTX 4090. So whoever is wondering, uh, the silent operating mode limits the CPU wattage uh, to 65 to 100 watts and the GPU to 55 watts. 
the performance operating mode limits it to 90 to 120 watts uh, for the CPU and 160 watts for the GPU. Finally, the turbo operating mode works at 135 to uh, 175 watt power for the CPU and 175 watts for the GPU. And actually, in the manual mode, you can further overclock the CPU by an extra 5 watts of power. So, hope this explains a lot about how this laptop actually works in different uh, operating power modes. So finally, coming back to the temperatures, right? In Windows, watching YouTube videos in silent operating mode, it is working in that uh, 55 to 70 degrees Celsius range. Just because the fans stop when the temperatures fall below 60 degrees Celsius in silent operating mode. So it just hovers at that range. Now, when playing games in turbo operating mode with the fans pretty darn loud, it went to 100 degrees Celsius at least a couple of times, right? I'd say it averaged out at around 90 degrees Celsius. That's still pretty darn hot, uh, very hot actually, but I get it, it is an insanely powerful laptop, right? Uh, some might say the most powerful laptop in the world. The weird part though, the chassis never felt hot. I mean, it was an absolute blast to still play on this thing when it was so hot. The heat did not convert over to my hands, which is Super weird. If you've been playing on laptops uh, in the past or right now, the chassis always, you know, tends to get pretty hot. This thing here felt slightly warm to touch, if even that, at 100 degrees. But all right, let's focus now on the battery, right? So how good is this thing here? Can you actually unblock the laptop and uh, perhaps play some games or do some uh, Excel or Word do uh, document work or watch some videos from the battery and get more than 10 minutes of battery time, right? Because this thing it has a 90 uh, watt per hour battery inside here. So uh, yeah, Asus has a couple of uh, tricks up its sleeve. Um, there's also, you know, the usual suspects, right? We can, you know, dim the display, we can disable the RGB, right? Uh, we can do all sorts of things, but Asus has a couple of extra neat little things up its sleeve. So first of all, you can actually completely turn off the RTX 4090 and just use the Intel integrated graphics instead to increase your battery survival time to its most maximum. Cause let's be realistic, you ain't actually gonna play a lot of games from the battery. Uh, just cause everything is limited to 30 frames per second. And if you do play, you can get about 30 minutes of battery life. Uh, so in my battery test, uh, what I did was the following. First test, I used the optimized GPU mode, which turns off the RTX 4090 and switches to the Intel GPU automatically when you disconnect the charger. Silent operating mode, 100% display brightness, 100% RGB brightness, 50% volume and having a random YouTube video playing the full screen mode. I got just about two hours of use, which is, uh, is not ideal for a 2023 laptop. But then again, I'm not being that energy efficient here. Second test, I still use the same optimized GPU mode, so Intel GPU, silent operating mode, but this time 50% brightness setting, RGB effects turned off, still 50% volume, and I got around 3 to 4 hours from the battery, which is a bit better result, but not by much. Now, you can tweak stuff even further uh, by, you know, li like completely dimming the display, only do Excel or Word document work, right? And you could push it up to seven hours of uh, use. The neat thing here is that uh, as it has a 90 watt per hour battery, you can actually charge this thing via the USB Type-C port. And um, finally, the web camera, right? So how good is this thing? Because uh, recently I did try out Asus's um, ROG Duo uh, laptop, uh, Duo 16, I think it was, yeah, uh, which had uh, 
two displays, right? An absolutely amazing laptop uh, to game and to edit uh, some, you know, um, video work or photo work, right? On Adobe Premiere or Photoshop, right? And it also had a webcam and it was also really, really an expensive ROG uh, laptop. And the webcam in that thing was one of the worst webcams I have ever seen. Like it was like a web camera from 2006, I kid you not. So I was really not expecting much from this web camera, but perhaps it's not that bad. Let's check it out. So welcome to the web camera test here. And as you can see, I mean, the quality, it's not the worst, definitely not, not the best, uh, but it uh, gets the job done. 720p, 30 FPS, I mean, could have been maybe like 1080p, a uh, bit better bitrate, right? But the audio quality is not that bad. Uh, this is on cardio uh, mode, um, so you can actually disable everything, but it's uh, it's not as good. So by enabling just cardio mode, you get this audio quality, which is decent enough to do some YouTube content and some, you know, uh, some Twitch live streaming or something like that, right? Uh, but there is AI noise cancelling uh, software. Uh, built into this thing as well. So I'm gonna play a song on the background and I'm gonna uh, use AI noise cancelling to show you how well it works on this thing. All right, so now I have a song playing on the background here, still on cardio uh, mode, so you shouldn't be able to hear me that well. I'm now gonna enable AI noise cancelling software. So now AI noise cancelling is uh, turned on, but on medium settings. And uh, I did test this and I feel that I need to push it to high. All right, so now AI noise cancelling has been turned to the maximum setting, uh, so the most aggressive mode. And yeah, you can definitely, you know, hear the music or the song less than me, right? So you can hear me much clearer, but it's still not the best rate. Right? Uh, it's still, at times, a little bit hard to hear what I'm saying. So, I mean, it's here, it's neat, right, if you need it. Uh, but, yeah, I think it will do a little bit better job if you're just not playing music next to the laptop, right? Uh, so, but yeah, for regular use, right, somebody is talking uh, somewhere near your computer, I think it won't pick that up, which is in nice, I guess. So there you have it, an absolute beast of a machine, right? Amazing for all sorts of work out there, amazing for games, amazing for workload, amazing for, you know, well, kinda amazing for video content because it has black bars. But yeah, everything else is pretty neat and uh, actually the web camera wasn't that bad as well. But uh, there's a lot more to, still to talk about here. Uh, so, first of all, I had the chance to try out the 2022 SCAR as well, and the updates ASUS has brought to the 2023 SCAR 18 is pretty amazing, actually. The overall look has been improved, uh, it just looks absolutely beautiful with its uh, somewhat of a see-through design, or like ASUS likes to call it, translucent. Uh, I think last time I saw something this good with a similar design were the early grey iMac G3s. They looked so darn good and so does this car 18. Asus never mentions this anywhere, but it does feel that the LCD cover is from some type of magnesium alloy compound, while the other parts are from a very high quality plastic. Uh, feels rugged and you can easily lift the lid of the laptop with just one finger, which is pretty nice. There is also a nice scar-like feature uh, where you can actually 3D print a cover for the left edge of the laptop, which is uh, pretty neat, uh, but I think this would be way cooler if you could add text on this thing. Uh, well, you could when you actually 3D print this at home, right? Uh, but also had uh, some RGB lights in it and you could, you know, then see it when the lid is opened and if your lid is closed, it would display the text on the top as well. Uh, something to think about here, uh, Team ROG. Now, coming to the keyboard, we again find an amazingly beautiful full-sized RGB backlit keyboard 
with NKEY rollover technology. Again, everything is looking pretty nice and the keys feel very nice to touch, so super quiet. But yeah, it's not a clicky mechanical keyboard, which I think I would have preferred, uh, but still this thing feels very very nice to use. The only issue that I have with ASUS is the RGB software. I mean the overall RGB design when you look at it is absolutely amazing you know the big RGB strip on the front and on the back looks absolutely pretty but the keyboard it's 2023 and you still cannot add multiple layers of RGB effects on top of each other. Something that Corsair has perfected already years and years ago, where you could, you know, have the default RGB rainbow effect, but then make your like 1, 2, 3, 4 and uh, WASD keys stay in a static color to always stand out and then add a third layer so when you actually finally hit a key, the RGB effects would explode from that key all across the keyboard, right? That's freaking cool. Asus on the other hand um, has had the same effects year after year after year uh, after year, never really improving its game. So again, Team ROG, please look into this. And uh, yeah, finally, the touchpad, right? Let's talk a little bit about the mouse as well, because it is still a pretty important thing on our laptop. And here we find an absolutely massive mouse trackpad, which is really, really nice. But just one single small thing that I don't like is that it doesn't have physically separated buttons. In my opinion, in my personal honest and humble opinion, I, I think uh, mouse pads, touch pads with separate mouse buttons still to this day are a better choice than just a huge trackpad, right? Uh, of course, there's some benefits uh, to this if you do some Photoshop work, I guess, but it's really not justifiable in my opinion. So yeah, uh, it's nice, but please make separate buttons for the mouse. Now, coming to the sound, this thing has a total of two downward firing woofers and two tweeters that are powered by Dolby Atmos, and you can definitely hear it. This thing is loud. Even at 50% volume, I felt, man, I, I need to turn it down a bit more. And the bass is really, really nice. Overall, it kind of felt like the Harman Garden cooperation they did with some other ROG models uh, in the past, but here they've decided to do their own thing, kinda. Uh, it's not Harman Garden, but still sounds very impressive. But all right, uh, let's talk a little bit about cooling, something that I touched upon in the benchmarking section, and uh, while I agree it is hot, the heat does not transfer over to your hands almost ever, which is absolutely amazing. So what have they done here? Well, Asus has completely redesigned their cooling solution. And yeah, this thing has not one, not two, but three fans that Asus names their dry fan technology. And uh, this is where I think they hit the nail on the head on why this thing feels so super cool to the touch, even when doing long gaming sessions that push the CPU temps to, yeah, 100 degrees Celsius. I mean, yeah, it is hot, but is it too hot for the hardware? We've seen laptops for years and years now going to 100 degrees while gaming, and we haven't seen any huge hardware failures uh, because of it. So if the chassis feels so chill to touch, I really do not see any problem of raging about how high these temperatures are. Also, what might help here are Asus's ArcFlow fans, which have a slight curve to them and are extra thin to, you know, further help maximize the airflow and reduce overall noise impact. And uh, finally, the air intake fans have a dust filter to help keep dust out a bit better from the internals. Another thing I found out is that the keyboard has a cool zone. 
No, seriously, Asus has introduced a tech they call Cool Zone, which is a series of holes underneath the WASD keys. So the third fan that is placed underneath the laptop uh, can suck some extra air from underneath um, your fingers pretty much, which is, yeah, pretty darn cool as it seems to actually work. Interestingly enough, Asus is also using liquid metal uh, from Thermal Grizzlies Conductan Out Extreme to connect the GPU and CPU to the heatsink, so the temperatures would not fluctuate too much, keeping everything super stable. But how loud was this thing, right? Uh, something to, that is like, I'd say impossible to you bring you uh, through a microphone, you know, it just, it doesn't work, right? What I can say is that it felt like a regular, you know, noisy laptop when gaming, right? It definitely wasn't a quiet laptop. But when gaming, you don't really pay that uh, much attention to how loud the computer or your laptop is, right? And if you're using headphones, even better, right? Uh, but yeah, it was definitely loud. And uh, But yeah, you can also use the silent operating mode, right? Uh, so, so when you finish uh, gaming on the turbo operating mode, switch it back to silent operating mode and the fan goes passive, you know, saving the fan's life, right? That's what matters. Fans' lives matter. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's pretty neat here. And uh, yeah, something that I want to add here is that when you go into the Armory Great software into manual mode, you can actually manually adjust the fan speed curves uh, on all the three fans, so, which is like super, super nice uh, on a laptop. Never really seen this before. So that's a really nice thing to see. So overall, I mean, there's not a lot of bad stuff to say about this thing. It is a near perfect laptop um, out there. So my final verdict for Asus's ROG Strix Scar 18 is going to be a 10 out of 10. A pretty darn complete laptop to own for gaming in 2023. Looks fantastic, feels fantastic, plays fantastic. Just some minor things that might bother someone in one desk and not in the other. Uh, you know, like the 16 by 10 aspect ratio. L like in games, this definitely felt better than 16 by 9. But I so hate the downside that all YouTube content and most videos in general will have black bars because of this. Anyway, I can strongly recommend this laptop to anyone who's looking looking for a really powerful gaming laptop in 2023. This thing is an absolute beast and keeps your hands cool, which is like you don't think about it when watching a video review. You're watching a laptop, right, uh, with a powerful system. Mm, okay, that looks cool. You buy it, go home, uh, start playing and feel your wrists and hands get really hot after like 30 minutes of playtime. This thing is super cool to touch even at 100 degrees, even at long gaming sessions, which is, just blows my mind. It's a really nice feature um, that I've not seen on many laptops before, if at all. So yeah, overall, absolutely amazing uh, job, Team ROG. Hmm, thank you. So anyway, that's gonna conclude my video review. And uh, yeah, keep improving ROG. You're doing a great job. Uh, maybe just improve a couple of things. And get that Asus RGB software up to date uh, on bar and even further beyond from what Corsair is doing. Just yoink it, yoink it and improve it. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you have any comments, leave it down below in the comment section. Leave a like, maybe subscribe, and I'll see you soon with another, hopefully, an interesting video. Ciao for now.